All right. So, what's your name, and uh, how are you affiliated with Columbia Gadget Works? Uh, my name is David, um, and I've been a member of Columbia Gadget Works for over a year now. Um, I found them online and was curious, so I came down to visit, and I just kind of stuck around ever since. Very nice, very nice. Okay, and so what do you have for us here today? What I have here is my uh, very hastily put together uh, aluminum foundry. I found some plans online that demonstrated how to do it, and it seemed easy enough. And so, you know, one day after work, I just got inspired and bought the few things that I didn't already have and uh, threw it together. So you were able to put it all together in one night? Yes, one night, um, actually within just a couple of hours. Um, so some of the, the quality of it shows that it was, you know, so hastily done. But, uh, yeah, with a, a little bit of pre-planning, you could probably do it a lot better, I think. I have been pondering this idea for uh, a couple of years now, I think. You know, just every now and then I'd you know, do a little bit more research and then come back and, you know, play a little bit more. So, My ultimate goal is I want to be able to cast my own parts out of aluminum and possibly other alloys. Um, the idea is, you know, sometimes you're working on a project and you're like, oh, man, if I just had this little piece, you know, but I need it sturdier than plastic or, you know, wood doesn't really work too well with it. Um, you know, you, you kind of want something solid. So aluminum would be a good, you know, step there in the, you know, stronger materials. So, uh, so why don't you walk us through uh, the different components you made and that kind of thing and how you made them, of course. Okay. Well, I, I just started out with a, um, I think it's a 12-quart pail. It says 12 quarts there. Okay. Um, started out with that. Um, and then I just mixed together plaster of Paris and play sand, and then a little bit of water, and uh, you fill that up until it's, you know, about three quarters of the way. And then there's a smaller uh, two and a half quart pail that you can sit inside, and that will give you your, your chamber. And it gives a nice, you know, finished uh, surface to it and everything. And then as that sets up uh, enough to be solid, you remove that inner pail out, and then you can start putting your hole for your air feeder tube. Um, this one, I really didn't get the, the angle and the location correct, so it's not as efficient as it could be. Uh, if I were to do it again, I'd probably do lower and offset so that it gets a, a swirl of the air flow around the charcoal to get a better heat dispersion. Um, so as this is finishing setting up, you can move on to doing your lid. Um, Ideally, what you do is you'd have your lid the same di uh, dimensions as the top of your pail, and that helps, heat cold, helps hold the heat in so that your material can heat up faster and get to the right temperature. Um, this is the same material. I just put some pieces of metal in there so I can remove it easily. Uh, and that one was cast in just a, uh, an oil catch pan for changing your car oil. You know, easy, had it on hand. Um, once it sets up in the, a little bit, you can cut the hole in the center. And uh, what I used was, my crucible is actually a disposable propane tank, like you use for a lantern or, you know, a barbecue grill. Uh, definitely make sure it's empty first. Uh, it's, it's kind of precarious whenever you're cutting it open because there may be a little bit of uh, propane in there, so you want to make sure it's thoroughly vented. Um, but I cut that in half, and that's what I used to cut the hole for the, the vent on there. You know, you just kind of wiggle it back and forth, and it, it chews through the plaster of Paris and the sand while it's, you know, still kind of moist. Um, the air inlet on this is just a piece of one-inch uh, steel pipe, and I've got a, a PVC fitting on the end. I was going to adapt on some PVC pipe to my blower, but the blower didn't quite have the the right kind of fitting to make that happen. So maybe in the second iteration, I'll get that set up. Um, my blower is actually from a pizza oven. Uh, I used to work at this company that made these blowers, and it was something I had gotten. You know, it, was, it had been thrown away, but it's still functional, so I just picked it up and, you know, kind of hung on to it. No, it has a new life. It does, yes. <laughs> it finally has a purpose, you know, so justified me keeping it. Uh, and this is just dryer tube. And, uh, of course, a, a red Dixie cup. So all just things that I had laying around, I just kind of threw it together. 
Uh, obviously, you have to buy the plaster of Paris and the, the play sand if you don't have that. And so. Do you know what kind of uh, temperatures this gets up to? I know that the temperatures that I recorded were over 600 degrees. Um, my infrared thermometer actually maxed out, and I think it maxes out at, at 700, 800, something like that. I've heard that it can get over 1,000. Um, I think like 1,200 maybe is what I'm seeing if you have it set up right. So uh, definitely capable of melting aluminum. Uh, as you can see here, it actually melted the steel container for the propane cylinder. So I'll have to upgrade that, I guess. Have you ever had any real scary moments with it yet? Actually, no, it was kind of boring, uh, <laughs> thankfully. Um, while getting everything set up with the blower and all that, uh, you know, I, I learned that if you don't have the right airflow, it will get uh, very smoky. So definitely make sure you're doing it outside. Um, and if you're melting aluminum cans, definitely make sure to stay away from any smoke because there's a lot of toxic stuff they put on cans. The, the lining is plastic or uh, smelled like paraffin, paraffin wax. So if I were to do any improvements on it, I would uh, probably make the, the blower variable. So as you're getting it fired up, you can gently introduce the, uh, you know, the airflow to it so you're not blowing ash and everything everywhere right off the bat. Um, probably a larger diameter air inlet. Like I said, lower and offset. Um, and actually a larger container too. Going with a, a larger diameter container would help because it, it gets pretty cramped whenever you get the charcoal and the crucible and everything yeah, in there. So, <laughs> and perhaps a better crucible. Definitely a better crucible. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think Amazon has plenty of them for under forty dollars, so I should have no problem finding a, a better one soon. Well, thank you, David, for coming out and showing off your uh, foundry. No problem. Thanks for having me. Fade to black. The champagne's uh, still